How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question, genetic step one, three-year-old boy, he's got hypotonia, hearing impairment, lactic acidosis, six-year-old brother with hypotonia, eight-year-old sister with poor eyesight and hearing. What's the most likely explanation for the findings? Choice A, allelic heterogeneity, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be classically cystic fibrosis on USMLA. Allelic heterogeneity means many different diseased alleles can cause the same condition. So, for example, in the CFTR gene, you can have the delta F508, uh, deletion of phenylalanine 508, which will cause CF. You guys have heard of that mutation, but innumerable mutations can cause CF. So this is also why the sweat chloride test is more accurate than genotyping, because if you do a genotyping panel, you might only catch 90, 96% of potential mutations. But if you do the sweat chloride test, you'll essentially catch 100% of people who have cystic fibro fibrosis. So once again, allelic heterogeneity just means many different alleles can cause the same condition. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, heteroplasmy, correct answer, refers to mitochondrial disorders. You need to know classic tetrad for mitochondrial disorders is hypotonia, lactic acidosis, ear and eye problems. Okay, very easy. And we gave you a mix of that stuff here. Mitochondrial inheritance, strictly maternal. So only females will pass it on. Don't confuse this stuff with X-linked recessive disorders. You got to be able to read pedigrees, which I've uh, linked my genetics PDF below. You can get practice with that stuff. But for mitochondrial disorders, the genetics for mitochondrial genes are separate from chromosomal genetics. So when you have the female with an ovum, each ovum is going to have a, a different fraction of diseased mitochondrial genes in comparison to other ova. And this can result in offspring with variation and severity of the mitochondrial disorder, which we observe here. So it's just a very buzzy genetics term. You have to say, oh, that's easy. That's just, they're just referring to mitochondrial disorders. And we have, oh, okay, yeah, hypotonia, lactic acidosis, eye and or ear problems. Let's just hop through. Uh, the, the other answer choice here, imprinting wrong fucking answer, means silencing. So prater willy and Angelman syndrome. prater willy is maternal imprinting, meaning genes coming from mom, the allele coming from mom is silenced, and then the gene coming from dad is deleted. Willie hates his dad is the mnemonic I came up with. It's stupid, but that's how you can remember. Willie hates his dad because uh, the genes deleted coming from dad, therefore it must be the maternal one that's silenced. It's maternal imprinting. In contrast, Angelman syndrome, mom is not an angel because mom's gene is deleted. Therefore, it's the one coming from dad that's silenced. It's, it's maternal imprinting. Wrong fucking answer. Choice the incomplete penetrance. Wrong fucking answer. This just means skipping a generation. Okay, so BRCA is classic. They want you to know it's autosomal dominant with incomplete penetrance shows up on one of the newer NBMEs. I'm not going to tell you the number because some of you get emotional. If I tell you the exact number of NBME, you're going to sit it. But you need to know that uh, breast cancer, okay? So you might have grandmothers who has BRCA mutation. Mom also has it, doesn't develop it, but uh, incomplete penetrance. So not everyone with the diseased allele, not everyone with the diseased genotype will have the diseased phenotype is how you can discuss it in genetic terms. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, variable expressivity, wrong fucking answer. So obviously it's confused with penetrance. So variable expressivity assumes complete penetrance. You have 100% of patients with the disorder, but there's just variation in the severity. So it's almost similar to heteroplasmy in a way, but don't confuse it because heteroplasmy is unique to mitochondrial inheritance, but variable expressivity could be NF1. They like that on USMLE. So NF1 means that every generation is going to have it, but maybe one patient might only have neurofibromas, which are the growths, the nodules under the skin. Another patient might have leash nodules, their iris hamartomas, axillary groin freckling, pheochromocytoma, in addition to the neurofibromas. So there's variation in severity. Many discuss many tangential discussions we can go on. Okay, I mean I don't want to make this a sixty minute clip. There is a weird NBME question out there which might confuse some of you, where they give you the the F zero, the grandparents generation that doesn't have the disease, but then the subsequent generations do, and it's NF one. And patients are like, well, how, invariable expressivity is the answer to that question. You say, well, how is that not incomplete penetrance? It's because you can get gonadal or germline mosaicism 
that can that can start off a disease in a pedigree. And, and achondroplasia is another example of germline slash gonadal mosaicism, which means that the mutation starts in one of the spermatogonia in the testes of a male, and the the male himself won't have the disease, but the children will. Okay, so maybe the grandfather in the F0 generation for NF1, he didn't have NF1, but it's in the, the mutations in his testes. And then now, as a result, 50% of his offspring are going to have it in subsequent generations. So I'm, clar I'm clarifying that NBME question for some of you who might get confused. But you got to know in general, incomplete penetrance means skipping uh, a generation. That's BRCA. Variable expressivity means everyone's going to have it, just varying severities, NF1 classically. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal when you make more content, but I'm still screaming you. Appreciate your time. That's a 